This is an SM Media production. Hi folks and welcome to the latest episode of the SM Media East of Scotland Football Show. I'm Scott McPike, it's a pleasure as always to be your host and I'm delighted to welcome this week's special guest. It's a pleasure to welcome on the show, Penny Cook Athletic Manager, Lewis Cool. Thanks very much for having me, mate. Thanks very much. It's a pleasure, mate. I'm looking forward to this. Obviously, the when we first started doing the show, you were kind of one of the first people we had been to, to get on, so thank you very much for, for doing it. Uh, no in, terms, in terms of the kind of journey to become the Penny Cook manager, I, I think it's safe to say it was been a bit of a whirlwind. Yeah, definitely. You know, <laughs> it's um, the start of the season. It was a bit. It happened within twenty four hours. You know, obviously, David Hanna left the post, and I think it was like the third manager in a, a few months. You know, so the club needed stability. Um, I actually made a call myself to the club, um, basically asking for the opportunity to do it. I think the club needed stability, and at that time, I think I was the right man. And how hard was it kind of coming to the decision to, to kind of leave Edinburgh United? He's obviously done a, a really good job with them and kind of kept them up the the last season. So was that a kind of hard choice to to make that step up or did it just feel the right time? It was 100% hard, one of the hardest decisions I've made. You know, the, the chairman Kev there, who's is still one of my best friends to now, to have a phone call with him who was on holiday just right. to say, listen, I'm, I'm going to go for it. You know, and he was obviously never left him in a great position considering Kev was away. And uh, the next step for that was obviously a wee bit harder than it take, but I had to do it for my own self, for my own development. Um, I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think the, the job was right for me, you know, and so far, so good. How important was it when you, when you went in to obviously just kind of calm the uncertainty? Because I imagine it would have been difficult for the players as well, because obviously having a managerial change and then another one before the season's, season's even started, it must have been quite hard to, to wrap their head around. So how important was it to go in and... Can I calm that? You know, on I wouldn't say unrest, but it wouldn't have been easy for the players, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, I had a lot of meetings with the players, especially senior members of the squad. You know, I've got a striker there at 37, Aaron Somerville, who's actually two years older than me. You know, right. it's uh, it's it's hard, you know. Some is a great guy and the respect he's gave me since I came into the club is second to none. It's a testament to the guy himself. Um that was the hardest part. The training parts and the match take care of itself. You know, it's something I've done my whole career. Yeah. Uh, I've been lucky enough to be in full-time football for the majority of that career. So to get that um, stability back in the club and get the trust on the side was always going to be the problem. It uh, was always going to be the difficult stumbling block. But lucky for me, and, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to work with some great guys at the club. And um, they took to me like I took to them, you know, and I, see, I speak to most of them every day. You know, I do run a quite a tight changing room. I know I'm quite... Uh, I'm almost like one of the boys, which is maybe sometimes one of my downfalls, you know, but uh, I was I had to be that manager where I don't just go into my manager's office. I go in and I, I socialise with the boys, you know, and it's been absolutely fantastic so far. And what was it like, obviously, the kind of start of the season, kind of two wins to kick off, obviously, two home wins against Canoe and Hutchie Vale, but two difficult results after that, obviously, the, the 6-0 away to Glenrothes and 9-0 away to Pennycook. How important was it to to restore confidence after that because obviously great start with two wins and then two wins at home and then two difficult away performances so how important was that kind of start of the season for you? It was hard it was really hard you know we, we got off the flyer the, the morale was high we were great against Canoe in the 5-1 game they also had to fail 3-2 um, we played absolutely fantastic in that game you know so I'm thinking this is an easy this is this is no problem I can I can go to the Champions League in the next few years this is <laughs> But obviously, we went to, to Glen Rothes, we took our foot off the break and uh, we thought we'd accelerate and they, they punished us really hard. The Tincastle game is, listen, I've been ups and downs my whole career from sending off to, to scoring in some great stadiums, you know, to then yeah. getting beat and things like that. That's the lowest I've ever been in football. You know, it was, uh, I'm not ashamed to say after the seven goal went and I went and sat in a changing room, I, I felt completely helpless, you know, it's, um, it was terrible, it really was. But it's a part of football, Scott. You know what I mean? It's yeah. one of these things. You're going to, the style of football I play is where we'll go forward the numbers, we'll play out from the back and we'll do the inverted wing backs and we'll play high. That I was always going to be open to do that and it kind of maybe changed it a little bit after that and maybe a wee bit of vulnerability crept in. But, you know, credit to the boys. After that, we got our foot back into it and they bounced back great. You know, the Tuesday session was a good meeting. 
Uh, they worked incredibly hard Thursday and they worked incredibly hard and we got back to it. So it's just one of these things. I've got a lot of respect and a lot of um, lovely messages off the managers in the league from Scott Bonner and even Rob Hart after that. You know, just saying, listen, these things happen, it's happened to us all. You know, it's something I never expected and you know what might happen again. But um, yeah, it was definitely a low point in my managerial career and I'm happy enough to obviously admit that maybe sometimes I got it wrong. You know, it's one of these things I'm not, I'm not silly. I'm not a silly boy. I've done a lot of silly things in my career. It's uh, well documented. <laughs> but, you know, it was a hard thing to go back and look at yourself. And it, it does. It ruins your weekend. Any manager yeah. will tell you that. Your, your weekend is based on the result of the, on the Saturday afternoon. Yeah, no, absolutely. But there's there's some really good results that I want to touch on with you. Obviously, you've got the two three twos that stand out away from home. Obviously, beating Dunbar United and beating Socky. So there are good results in there. But there's there's obviously what has it been kind of consistency that's maybe been the issue? Or are you kind of looked at that? Or yeah, of course. As you know, I, I watch every game back. I do a lot of video analysis reports, and I've got a, a fantastic working staff there that put a lot of effort on away from away from the training ground. You know, so mm-hmm. we do we look at that. As I say, it's going to be one of these seasons for us. I think Scott, where yeah. we're going to lose games, and I think we're going to pick up points where nobody expects us. You know, Socky game was fantastic. Two 0 down at half time. Uh, so the 2-0, 2-1 down at half time and scored right at the break at half time there. And we ended up coming away with a 3-2 win. Dunbar was the exact same. 3-2 um, as well, you know. I have players there that on their day are absolutely brilliant and at the top of the right at the top of the chain when it comes to playing football. As I say, we are a very young squad though. You know, it's going to be times where we maybe struggle to manage the game a little bit. But that's down to myself to obviously prepare the players for that as well, you know. So yeah. I don't get too high now when we win, and I don't get too low mm-hmm. when we lose, but it's a roller coaster season for Pennycook this year. We know we know that exactly. The players know that exactly. But I can't fault their efforts, you know. They don't come away off the park giving me ninety eight percent, it's always a hundred percent. Are we the finished article? Far from it. You know, I don't think we've seen the best of Pennycook yet, but I know for a fact there'll be a team comes shortly and we'll get real humbled. And have you been impressed with the kind of standard of the, the, the top flight? Obviously there's been some kind of Good teams obviously came to to Penny Cook and won, but you've but you've kind of handled kind of some of the big sides quite well. Like what are you what's kind of your, been your thoughts since kind of get into the Premier Division, seeing it as a manager and the kind of overall standard of the not just the, the kind of teams on the part, but the kind of professionalism of managers and things like that. How you kind of found it? It's been great, you know. Like as I say, I've not really fell out with anybody yet, <laughs> which is a kind of surprise to me, Scott. Um, everyone's been really welcoming them. You know, it's the standard of the games. Is there, you know, it's right there. There's players in that in this league that could easily step up and play a couple of levels above. Yeah. You know, it's all about the the luck of the break. You know, it's uh, if your face fits at the right time. As I say, all my players it doesn't matter if you're now 18, 24, 30. There's no money in Scottish football that they can go abroad and bring in players from St Mirren and things. They have to look to the lower league. You know, we've got some great players there. Look at Ben Wardlaw, just came in for us this season, 14 goals. You know, I mean, I bought him from Edinburgh United, a kid that wasn't playing at Haddington. He's another player that's capable of stepping up. But I've got eight or nine players there that are all capable of stepping up and playing. I'm just blessed to work with them just now and play a solo part in the journey. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we'll we'll kind of touch on the, the games over the weekend and we'll kind of come back to the kind of Penny Cook games that are coming up over the next few weeks. But we'll start with, obviously, Penny Cook won, Tynecastle won in the Premier Division. Better result than the, the last time he's obviously faced each other. But, mm. you know, 1-1 one, one draw... Uh, Lang scored for obviously yourselves and Crombie scored for Tynecastle. Tynecastle down to ten men. How do you can analyse the game and put your overall kind of takeaways? It was a funny old game, you know. It wasn't a lot of quality played in the game, which I'm disappointed in. We never really played to our full strengths, you know. We're a, we're a passing side that play out from the back, and I give my players the freedom. This is one thing I will stick by: is I don't care if my players make a bad pass, you know, they miss a shot. I want them to have. I talked about it in my pre-match game my post-match interview, it takes balls to win a game of football, Scott. It takes yeah. that balls. If things aren't going well, I'm looking for somebody. I've got a player, Scott Taylor McKenzie, that you probably know, mm-hmm. is out just now. He's been injured. You know, he's won the league at Kelty. He's won the league with other teams and things like that as well. A fantastic footballer. We missed him on Saturday. Scott's an, he's, he's a nightmare to deal with sometimes. You know, he's, he screams. He's a real winner. Even if you beat him in training, he hates it. You know, and we missed him because he does go grab that game. You know, if things are going well, they roll up the sleeves. But I'm looking for somebody, a little spark to to grab that game, go win the ball, drive that 30 yards, maybe have a shot from 20 yards and go grab that. I never had that on Saturday. We were just happy just to kind of play the ball a little bit longer and we're happy to shut shop. Maybe that's because obviously 9-0 previously in the season, you know, a lot of the boys, it was a hard one for the boys to accept that. Um, I think Rob will be a little bit disappointed as well. But I think the game changed when it went down to nine, 10 men. 
I think they worked harder, you know, and sometimes that happens in football, Scott. I've been on the, the receiving end there and on the end as well, where you roll the sleeves up and you tend to work that little bit harder when you've got 10 men. So we missed a couple of chances in the first half. They missed a bit more than owing our goalkeeper on loan for Falkirk. You know, he pulled off a fantastic save. So, you know, probably a point was probably fair at the end, but I think both, both managers were certainly disappointed not to get three. Yeah, and I think it's obviously you, you can see looking at looking at I kinda look at the games before they, they kick off and you kinda look at positions in the table and I think a lot of people would have thought a draw would, would have been kinda probably a fair result if if it happened. So I think I think it, is it kinda with Time Castle as well, like what were they like in comparison to last game? You know, they they were kind of similar. They're a young team a bit like ourselves, you know, they work on a, a minimal budget like ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's you look at the some of the other teams in the league that have got a massive budget. Us Time Castle um, Inverkeys and things that don't have a massive budget. You know, I know Pennycook before did have a lot of money and things like that. This season it's completely different. This is a reshaped Pennycook side now. We have to manage ourselves a bit better. Um, Tyne Castle got a couple of great young players there. You know, they've got full energy. They work really hard for each other. They're not. A, they're not a hard. They're not a, um, an easy team to beat. You know, look at some of the results they've had this season as well. Especially start. Rob had a fantastic start to the season. You know, so. I'm always disappointed not to win the game, Scott. I'm that type of guy. I want to win every game. Um, but is it a bad point? Probably not. You know, both teams need to pick up points and a point each is probably not the worst result we could ever hope for. Yeah, no, absolutely. And we'll we'll move on to the, the league leaders, Broxburn, a 2-1 home win over Sockey, remaining 13 points clear at the top of the table. Uh, Brass and Douglas with the goals again. And this Broxburn machine just keeps motoring. Yeah, they just know how to win. You know, I've played against Brock's this season and to be honest, we missed a couple of chances before before they, they actually went up and scored. But, you know, the big boy Brass and Errol has scored on goals for fun this season. You know, they've played really well and it's a credit to Billy McPhee. You know, they have a massive squad. They do. They have players, that I think they've got a squad of like 26. So when injuries do catch up, Billy can go change it quite comfortably. You know, they're getting rewarded for that. You know, fair play to Brock's I thought their meals would be a fell off. But no, they just seem to pick up points picking two ones, one nil here and there, and that's a sign of a championship winning team. And do you think that that, that is the kind of the method as well? Obviously, they're winning games, but it's, you look at their kind of talisman as well, like Brass and Douglas, and there's a few more you can off the top of my head. But they they just seem to have that consistency. They just seem to have that balance in their side. But as you say, they have a big squad. They have the budget. They they are a side that are are capable of of pushing on this season. <laughs> And I, I think to be like you look at the depth at the top of the table and the kind of top kind of eight or nine, and to be thirteen points clear at this stage of the season, they just don't. I, I, it just looks really hard to stop them. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, like I did fancy Genefield at the start of the season. You know, I did fancy. I think most people did. Um, but you know, what well, Broxburn have answered the critics really well. You know, as I say, it's a credit to Billy. It's a credit to the boys out there. They've done really, really well. They're a good, good, good side. Well drilled. The boy Locke in the middle of the park is a fantastic yeah. player. Um, but they're strong all over the park. You know, they get forward the numbers, they get balls in at the box and Errol's in the form of his life at the moment. You know, it's one of them, like, I've been through the kind of stages of that in my career. Even when you're not playing well, you're still scoring goals. You know, so he's been a big testament and a big big talisman for Broxburn this year. And, you know, as I say, I can't, I can't um, tip my hat off to Billy enough that he's got a fantastic squad this season. Yeah, it does that. And Genefield, obviously, a, a kind of different result for them than, than usual. They drew 3-3 at home with Glenrothes. They were 2-0 down. So, overall, I, I think a point, if you're 2-0 down, though, coming back to, to get anything out of the game, you'll take it. Glenrothes could be a big point for them. Obviously, they're still kind of challenging to, to get out of the, the relegation zone. They've got the games to make up. Mm -hmm. So, probably a point would probably be okay for both sides. I think um, I think Genefield will be more disappointed than Glen Rothis. You know, Glenn, I think it's a fantastic point for Glen Rothis. You know, they've got a goal scorer there as well, and Stuart Cargo. Yeah. You know, Stuart Cargo's Kelly all time goals, all time top goal scorer. You know, um, a fantastic striker. So if you get balls into the box, you know they will score goals. Genefield are fantastic football inside. The lad Norcott very good on the wing. Um, Dale Robertson, I played it. Was it Arbroath when I was, I believe it or not, as a young kid? I think he went over the States to play, but they're scoring goals. You know, they're, they've got a lot of goals all over the park. Um, I've not played Genefield yet. We played them on Saturday, but, you know, um, I've got a lovely report. I've got, I've seen them a couple of times over the season, but, you know, they're, they're a fantastic football inside, and it's, it's going to be a very difficult game for us. Yeah, no, absolutely. We'll get, we'll, we'll do a wee preview on that later on. Uh, probably mm -hmm. the one of the form sides in the league at the moment, Halla Bees Hawthorne, third away one in a row. They won 4 3 away to Haddington. And 
What a turnaround in Halabies recently. Yeah, they've been brilliant. You know, they they were very unlucky not to get a point against us. You know, they've got the big guys. I think it's Dan Watt they got back from uh, yeah. East Stirlingshire. You know, he's he's maybe not everyone's cup of tea, but what he does is he holds the ball up. He's big, he's strong, he's awkward. You know, um, Daniel Bauer, obviously from Edinburgh as well. You know, a good friend, uh, not so much a good friend, but you know, known through a lot of friends. Ross Allen, a friend of mine. They're going to be fine, Hill of Beast. You know, they're they're a good side. They're well drilled. They know exactly how to to win games. Are they going to be the best football inside your CL season? 100% not, but you know what, they're well drilled, they defend for everything and they were very unlucky not to get a point against us in earlier on in the season and fair play to their management staff as well, you know, it was very easy to kind of just accept it, but they've rolled the sleeves up, worked harder and they're getting the rewards for it just now. They certainly are. Uh, next result, final result in uh, in Saturday was uh, Inverkeith in 2, Dundonald 5. I don't know if you saw the, the Jordan Oru goal that I, do, I still don't know if he meant it or not, but that's a big three points for them, obviously, because then Donald have kind of struggled to get wins in the board. So to go away and score five goals is, is massive, I think. Yeah, definitely. Especially in Berkeven at home, they were very strong. We could have break them down there. You know, um, they've done very, very well. Change of management, obviously, they brought the Lunkarty manager back um, in, in Berkeven as well. He's, he's done very, very well there. You know, it's been really good, really positive since he's came in. Um, Dan Donald with Stevie Husband, another young coach, you know, at Hearts as well, and things like the Blackpool. So his knowledge of the game is fantastic. You know, I don't know what's happened with Dan Donald. I know they've got rid of their striker and things like that, the big lad Healy. I don't know if there's money problems or they're maybe just cutting their losses. I'm not too sure. But regardless of that, three points away from home, that's all you can ask for. 100%, 100%. Final result on Sunday, uh, Hutchie Vale 3, Canoe 1, uh, Canoe 0, sorry, Viola, Chisholm and Muir. And Hutchie Vale, obviously, uh, go clear in second, three points clear in second place, obviously, still got a bit behind Broxburn. But the, the with Hutchie Vale, they've been just so solid and they've got a lot of young talent there and they're capable of beating anybody. Yeah, definitely. I'm good friends with the manager, Ryan. You know, I know Ryan really well from, from years in the game. A lovely big guy, somebody I still speak to quite a lot, you know. Ryan puts a lot of effort in it. You know, his hands are quite tied there. He doesn't have a big budget either. You know, what he's done there is... Is absolutely fantastic. You know, he's got players there like the Viola Twins that have scored goals, Ringes scored goals for years, Scotty Maxwell has played for Spartans for years. You know, they've got players there that have got real good experience and, you know, probably one of the most formed teams in the league as well at the moment, actually. You know, they've done fantastically well and I take a lot of respect to that for, for Ryan for that. You know, it's been, I know he's works really, really hard. So the person they put in, he work hard, they do get awarded and fair play, I take my half to him. Yeah, 100%. Let's move into the first division. Probably the game of the weekend in that league was Dunny Pace 3, St Andrews United now. Sam Colley with a double. And Sam Colley for Dunny Pace, he just seems to, every week, he's put forward for the player of the week. And you obviously know we do the player of the week. He's yeah. always on top of the list. Like he's, yeah. They've been so good recently. And again, I think Dunny Pace are going to be very, very good this season. They have been, but they're just the way they've been recently. They're the likes of Sam Colley, Martin France as well, have got a lot of talent. Yeah, hundred percent. Another team has done really well. Done the pace. I fancied um, Whitburn to maybe do well. I like a friend of me, Daz, as a manager there. Um, but you know what? Done the pace. I've answered a lot of questions, but I don't think anyone would have fancied him to win the league this year. But you know what? They've, they've got goals all over the park. As I say, the young lad Colley scoring goals for fun. You know, and it's a hard cycle to break when you're used to scoring goals. You know, it's it comes on the goals seem to be a lot bigger. The ball becomes a beach ball. You know, you can you can't miss it. And uh, fair play to them. You know, it's a team that works really hard for each other as well. So they're also getting the rewards for that as well. Yeah, they absolutely are. Uh, Newton Green Star, obviously the main top, a three one one away to Oakley United. Chris Robertson with a double. And obviously when you've got the likes of kind of Donny Pace playing St Andrews and that kind of the two of the top five teams challenging each other, how important is it to go and do your job in one? Of course, that's all you can do, you know, you want to win it at home and hopefully pick up three on the foot of the road, you know. Uh, Newton Granger, a former club of mine, hope they do really, really well. You know, I know a lot of the boys up there. Uh, Chris Roberts, I think he got his 50th goal this season, I think yeah. his 50th goal of his career there. Um, but I'm really good friends with Sean Guiney, who plays centre half for them, that came in last year. You know, he's got loads of experience now. Um, they just keep picking up points as well. It's going to be a really close league that one this year. You know, there's a lot of, lot of good players in that team. And something I'm definitely following as well, obviously looking for players for next year and things to build on. So, as the weather picks up a little bit, I'll be out during the week and I'll be at a lot of these games in this league, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Camelin won 3-0 at home to Lacour. Well, fair, Kieran Dolan with a double. They did it with 10 men as well. They got a man sent off. So, again, similar just to, to get that one on the board, get into the, 
a wee bit of daylight now between them and St Andrews and came on the other side obviously they've came with a big a lot yeah. of hype over the over the summer and they're getting the job done they, they're getting there I think yeah, one hundred percent. It's um, I know a lot of them came from St Gen and things like that. I know the chairman really well, the um, the lad Santa that played that such out his pub and things like that, you know. Okay. They've brought in some fantastic players, some fantastic Reby boy uh, Reese Glack and it's in there who was an ex player of mine at Airdrie as well, a part of the team. But they bring in players from all over, you know, they've got boys in from East Kilbride, I think the striker he was in from scores goals for his work for fun. But they will play football the right way. You know, Will Day's dad, I think Greg Wells there as well, and his dad's a manager. Yes, he is, yeah. Yeah, so how can, like, if you can't learn off of Greg Weld as a young player there, you know, or his dad, his knowledge in the game's fantastic. So, Caelan, I think, will fight right to the end. And I wouldn't be surprised if they managed to go up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Flatburn, uh, six deep home run over Vale of Leiden, six different goal scorers, and Flatburn have a lot of depth. You mentioned there, obviously, you're, you're quite... Friendly with Darren Wilson. What what do you kind of think he'll be thinking at, at this time of the season? Because obviously they were so good last season in the second division, and yeah. you thought they would go up and maybe not stroll it, but you thought they'd be, and they still are. To be fair, they've got games in hand, but they've kind of not been where you thought they would be. Is that unfair? Eh, I think injuries and things came into yeah. play with that. You know, I know I know they had a lot. A goalkeeper got injured. They got a really bad one. Um, I think it was almost for Cowden Beef the goalie. Then we sent him Kelly Leap on for him. To help him out, you know, it's just it's one of these things for Darren. And to be fair, I hope we do go up for Darren's sake. You know, Darren's a great guy. He spent a lot of time with him over the summer just talking about things. They run a fantastic club there. You know, they get I think they get a lot of fans in there. Um, he's very professional in his approach to games. He's very professional outside of the park. A guy who's got loads of experience in the game as well. You know, so he'll be scratching his head wondering if it's what's happened, what he's doing wrong. He'll, answer, he'll ask himself questions before he asks anybody else. You know, he's that type of guy. Um, I think they will pick back up again. I think they need to break that run. And obviously scoring six goals, I think you can maybe just get that again and get on that run again. So I'll be good to follow over the next couple of weeks, see how they pick up. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, probably the the result of the weekend was at Kirkcaldy. Kirkcaldy and Dice Art 5, Amazon Rangers 3, that does not tell the whole story here, Lewis. Uh, Armiston no. Rangers were actually 3 0 up. And oh, yeah. They're Cody and Dice had five, five goal scorers in the second half. A weird game to assess, I would say. Like, you'll be, Phil will be gutted with that. But oh, Cody, big Phil will be pulling his head out. He will. He will. I saw his tweet he actually, and he, you could tell he was just so frustrated. But on the other yeah. hand, Kirkcaldy, obviously, it's like huge three points for them. It's a massive three points, especially the resilience it shows being three 0 down. It's very easy enough to just basically throw the towel in. But you know what? The I don't, I'm not too familiar with Kirkcaldy, but the manager's got to take a bit of credit for these half time team talk, you know, and the players have got to take a massive, massive credit. Um Fildo will be absolutely pulling his head out of that. I know him quite well. He's an honest big guy, he's done a fantastic job up at Honest, and you know what he's um, what he's achieved there is is no shot of brilliant. Um, I've actually got a player on loan there just now, and obviously I'm an ex um, honest and player, sorry. So it's a club that, you know, I always look for the results and I always try to get up there to watch when I'm not got a game myself, and I do wish them all the best. But Phil will be fine. You know, he'll dust his cell down this week, he'll get them into training, and uh, they'll be ready to go again on Saturday. Yeah, they absolutely will be. Uh, Recife 2, Preston Athletic 2, Recife, where... Uh, now set in sixth place, obviously Whitburn overtake them and Preston Athletic are obviously going up there in eighth place. So probably a fair result when you look at the, the kind of positions in the table. Preston, I think Preston will probably be the happier of the two sides with that. Possibly, yeah. The old strike partner Stevie Crawford there's in charge of uh, Rosyth now, I think, I believe. Is that right? Yeah. And Stevie Crawford's in charge there, yeah. Old strike yeah. partner of the Cowden Beef, a lovely guy. You know, um, He'll have them well drilled. You know, it's a massive, massive, uh, probably downfall from him when you think about it, from where he's been. But you know what? Fair play to him. He's rolled his sleeves up. He thought he loves football that much. He'll take a job to get back into it. But will he be there next year? I have no clue. How can you not have Stevie Crawford around your club? You know, it's uh, an ex-Scotland international guy who scored goals for fun in the SPL. So I'd imagine he'll not be short of a few offers. But it's a, it's a, I think it's a, a share of the points is probably about right. Yeah. You know, um, Kazali, um Paul Curry and obviously John Daly is down at Preston. I know how hard they work as well, you know. Two good lads in the game. And they'll be maybe the happier of the two for a point on the road, probably. But, you know, um, I think both teams will be fighting right to the end there. 
Yeah. Uh, Blackburn United 4, Heriot Watt 2, Kyle Sampson with a hat trick for Blackburn United. It obviously takes Blackburn United into ninth. And mm. what you kind of made of them so far? Kind of funny team, aren't they? They're up and down and things like that. I know they had a couple of players, I think well, they maybe just lost one just now to Lynn Lithgow. Um, a very good wee player that was actually on my radar as well. But BJ will be disappointed with losing uh, 4 2 on, on the road, you know, for what he's done as well, the style of play he's got. He runs it like a full time team. You know, he puts a lot of effort into it. A uh, really, really nice guy. So he'll be disappointed with that. And it'll be hard for him this week to probably pick up his players. But if anyone can do it, you know, BJ will be there ready to do it again. And I think both teams are, as well will still be fine. Yeah. Blackburn will come good. You know, they've got that physical side. They'll, try to, they'll, they'll hustle you for 90 minutes, whether they're winning or they're drawing. They'll try and get the three points, you know. And fair play, that was a massive result for them. Yeah, absolutely. Final game in the first division. Leeds Athletic 4, Whitehill Welfare 1. Lewis, I had a bit of a, a, bit of a <laughs> theory when Martin came in. I know it's only for a month, but... I've tried it, I've tried it. I've tried it myself. He did, He's such a good the, asset for them to have for, for even just that short period of time. Martin Mon is the best striker in that league just now. You know, be playing that. It's as simple as that. If you're being honest with yourself, you know, Martin's probably just trying to help out his friends, I think, which is fair enough, because Hume and Rob will deserve that kind of reward, you know. Um, the Bulls brilliant. There's no question about it. That kid, he'll work his butt off up front. He'll he'll hassle everything. He's my type of striker, to be fair. And believe me, Scott, I've tried. But <laughs> we can't. Uh, I think he's uh, maybe got other plans to come the end of the season. But you know what? If, when he's at Leaf, and Jeff Friedman, who's down there, obviously I'm an ex-Leaf athletic player as well from my short time there. Uh, I know how hard he works off the scene, try to get keep Leaf on the map and things like that. He does really, really well. And, you know, I've got a lot of friends down playing for Leaf, and I'm delighted for them. You know, if Martin come in for a month, and if it's only a month, he's doing really, really well. And I hope he gets Hume and Robbo right back up that league. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's a, a great asset for them to have. And I can tell, but you're, if you're not overly happy. I'm gutted. He's, I'm yeah, gutted. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. But the fact that he's, he's, he's obviously there, for, there to help out, that is a massive, massive coup for them to get. 100%. Speaking of... Well, oh, you go. Sorry, Scott. He's... he's He's maybe just want to enjoy his football and play with his friends, you know. That's maybe maybe try to find the love for the game again, you know. And I've got full respect for that because as many times during my career, I didn't want to turn up to tune, I didn't want to play. I wish I could go back and play with my friends. Instead of sitting at home thinking about the guy who's like, you know what, let me go help out my friends and look how the reward he's getting. Hopefully he finds his bug again and hopefully gets back in it because he's a real talent. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, speaking of players that have, have come down and probably are playing at a league far too good for them, uh, second division Newbury now bonus athletic nine Callum McDonald four goals in 38 minutes and you would think one in nine now would probably be enough firepower but bonus have obviously went again they've announced the signing today of Sandy Cunningham for the Lithgow Rose mm-hmm. and it just makes them even more frightening yeah definitely Sandy's most frightening partner is still in Albion believe yeah. it or not so I know Sandy really well you know he won leagues but still in Albion so the kids yeah. got loads I still call him a kid he's a wee bit older now but um, I play a fully experienced now. Bonus are going to go straight up, and I'm going to be surprised if they come straight up into our league. The league after, you know, they're a fantastic team. You've got a great facility there. You use that to their 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 strengths, you know. So, yeah, nine 0 doesn't surprise me. It could be anybody that takes a nine 0 off them. I mean, it's just frightening. See when you you look at, I'm I'm just looking at the kind of I, I do this every plus sixty nine goal difference. That's yeah, remarkable crazy. for any side. Like I know they did they did it last season. I think they'd scored like a hundred goals, and I was talking. That's actually, just the two strikers, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was talking to somebody actually. We were doing the Lowland League show earlier, and I was talking to somebody there, and they, I'd said obviously about uh, TV Darren Mulligan and uh, East Kilbride, and they were just talking. Mm-hmm. And if you look at how well Bonnes have done, they could win. Realistically, Bonnes could win any cup in East yeah. Scotland. Like realistically, like. They're, they're so so impressive, but what's impressed me is is that they've they've lost a few players and they've brought players in to replace them, and they've even 100%. probably done even better. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think they won't be sure of Bob or two through at Bonnets either, you know. So I think we're coming kind of between the lines on that one when it comes to the the, maybe the budgets they've got though. But you know, they're a massive club. You know, I know the Athletic, whether it's the juniors or whether other side, but you know, it's um, it's a great place to play football. You know, I went there with Cowden Beef in the Scottish Cup a, a few years back and the crowd they had there was incredible, you know, yeah. and I think they still get like 300, 400 to games now, you know, it's massive. And so why wouldn't a player in the lower leagues want to go to Bonnes and play? You know, it's um, 
as I say, that 9 0 doesn't surprise me. You know, it could be anyone in that league that takes a 9 0. And if they get somebody in the cup, I know there are many teams that want to go there and fancy their chances. You know, it's going to be a real difficult place for anyone in leagues or above. Certainly. Uh, Armadale 4, Peebles Rovers 2, Fairley, Bailey, Gillespie and Abubakar for Armadale. And they're on mm-hmm. our side that have just come up and they've they've come up for the third division last season and they look as if they're going to be good again. 100%, yeah. They've done uh, really, really well. Nice big plastic pitch there as well. You know, is it, is it, Col- is it Collins in charge? Isn't it Collins Strickland? Yes. Coco. Yeah, Coco. Coco's well experienced now as well. You know, he's played at the game. He's played for the left goal for years and his connections in the game probably around these areas will be massive. You know, it's another team that will fight right to the end and probably fans the chances it will probably go straight up as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thornton are still in third. They won 4 0 away to Ormiston Primrose, Adam, Westwaters, Laird, and Drummond. And Thornton have been very, very good as well. And they, they've got the games in hand to, to maybe even challenge for second. Thornton are a funny team. You know, it's the same. The guy there has been there for something like 25 years. You know, he deserves it's a Craig. I'm sure his name's Craig. It's, Craig Gilbert. Uh, Craig Gilbert. But, you know, he's, he deserves a lot of credit. 25 years at one club. You know, I know that. Um, I think it was viewed from the terrace, and I think on a few months ago, you know, that guy's dedicated almost his whole, like half his career to to Thorn and Hibbs. So can can you cred, can you discredit them? You know, do they deserve maybe to be up there? Probably, yeah. The fact they'll never get my credit is the fact that's got Hibbs in the name. You know, <laughs> <laughs> as, uh, no, but you know, it's a it's a very difficult place to go to, and you know, um, I wouldn't write Thorn and Hibbs off either. No, absolutely not. Do Keith are in fourth, uh, two one one home to Tweedmouth, uh, Brockett and Lenny with the goals, and Do Keith have just been ve- very, very consistent. And I would, I would say Stirling Uni as well. They obviously beat Edinburgh United. I'll get your thoughts and you know mm-hmm. club in a second. But Do Keith and Stirling Uni obviously they're very, very tight, tight together. Thirty points. Do Keith have been seventeen games. Stirling Uni uh, nineteen, and they're two big home results for them. Definitely, Jock will be delighted with that. You know, it's a very difficult place to go to Dal Keith. Um, I know he's had a hard pre-season. You know, a lot of his players left and things like that, and he didn't know where he was going to have to be. But uh, Jock's Jock's one of the older heads in the game. You know, somebody I speak to as well, and he's always happy to give to give ex- um, his experience on to me. Dal Keith, I think, are going to be fine. You know, does Jock deserve another kind of title and another promotion? One hundred percent. You know, he'll fight right to the end. It'll be hard to break down big, strong team up there. The lad um, Brocky scores goals for fun. Especially big Lewis Russell as well. You know, he'll score goals for fun. You put balls into the box, they will score two up front. Old school, definitely. You know, but he still, he still gets reward from it. So fair play to him. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, what about, obviously, Edinburgh United? Like, how do you can assess them so far since, you, since you've left? It's been difficult. You know, it was difficult when I was there as well. We'd work on zero resources. You know, what they do for them, what Kev does up there. He's a one man band. He's, he does a fantastic job. You know, maybe done his own downfall as well. Uh, he's one of my best friends away from football as well, so I speak to him daily. And the report back was that they were pushing, they were pushing for the equaliser along the Stirling Union, and sadly, obviously, they got hit in the counter. But Nizzy will do really well there. You know, he's a very, very good coach. I really hope that they get the players in to, to obviously keep them in the division. I'd be very disappointed in things if they do go down. Obviously, it's a club that I'm up there all the time. I still do my one to ones and things at the club, so I'm always around the club. And for the players that I've worked with up there, I really, really do hope they just club together and get the results. I know they can. Mm-hmm. I just hope that the results and maybe a wee bit of luck go their way. But they'll fight right to the death. You know, and they'll have them well prepared on Tuesday, Thursday for the game coming on Saturday. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, An Edinburgh derby saw Edinburgh South beat Edinburgh College 2-1. Mm-hmm. And Edinburgh South, they're, they're, they're flying under the radar a wee bit here. They've 27 points with 13 games. And I think because they've maybe not played as many games, we've maybe underestimated them, but they're more than capable of challenging for promotion if they keep us going. I had the chat with Ainsley actually earlier on the phone. Ainsley's a good friend of mine, you know, so I had the chat. And Ainsley's very, yeah, we'll just take every game as it comes. He works incredibly hard as well. Another team that's on short resources up there. They also play out of Edinburgh, uh, United's ground at Patties Road. Mm-hmm. Um, Ainsley's done a fantastic job. You know, he's a really, he really has done a well organised. He brings players out of nowhere. Gives him a platform to play. You know, he's a, he's a very, very good coach, a very good man manager, and um, they're definitely finding it under the radar. You know, if I had to put a bet for an outside bet, I would be sticking a tenner on Ainsley and his Edinburgh South team, and maybe sneaking in that third place and get the promotion. You know, interesting. That could be a, a big call coming into the season. Mm-hmm. Uh, Coldstream won. Kennyway Star Hearts now. Uh, the boy Gray scored for Coldstream. 
and they're sitting in seventh place. They've just been very, very solid this season, Coldstream. Yeah, you know, that they were never going to be relegated contenders coming down from the league above as well, you know. It's a team I'm not, not too familiar with, you know. It's, uh, it's a team I've not really seen. Uh, I think Kieran Ainsley's away. In fact, he is away because he's at Harrington now with Scott, part of Scott Bonner's team. But Kieran played with me at Berwick and um, I know he's done a good job there. I don't know too much about it, but Kenaway's also had a had an up and down kind of this season as well. You know, going up there is very, very difficult to get three points up at Kenaway. But uh, there'll be some journey for them on the way back from there. You know, it's a, a long and winding road all the way back up to the end of Fife and it from there. Yeah, absolutely. Final result in the second division. Burn Island 3, East House is lovely 2. Thompson, Murphy and Hicks with a goal. And that, I believe, puts Burn Island up four places from 12th to 8th. So, mm-hmm. couldn't ask for anything better than that, could you? No, no, I was there at the start of the season. I think it was one of the fourth or fifth game in. I went to watch Edinburgh United. I was just actually after the Hatchie game. We had the night off, so I went through to watch and uh, Edinburgh United were something like 3 nil up at half-time. Then I thought, this could be 7 or 8 here. This, is, this could really start their season. Next minute they came out, 5-3 they got beat, just for the reason being that they just rolled their sleeves up on Ireland, made it very difficult and took their chances. You know, they're a well-drilled team as well. Maybe not the best football on side. I don't think the park gives them that, that joy to play nice football on. But what they will do is they'll pick up points at home. They'll make it very difficult for teams to go up there and play. Yeah, absolutely. We'll move into the third division. We'll start with Hoyk, Royal Albert 1, Bathgate, Thistle 4. And Bathgate, Ryan Wilson with a double. And Bathgate, they've, they've just been very, very good this season. Yeah, delighted for Gordon. You know, Gordon, believe it or not, was in my heart team uh, under 10. And, right, OK. Uh, yeah, so... I lost touch with Gordon and then we played on pre-season with uh, Edinburgh United through there, the host us through there. It's, it's a great to see Gordon getting his chance in the management, you know, and I'm rooting for him this year. Really yeah. am. He deserves a, he deserves all the credit, you know. He, he looks after, he plays really well, he's well drilled and tell you what, nobody ever gave him the the titles at the start of the season and thought maybe they could maybe struggle and things. He's totally done a job there and he is now in prime position to go through up. Yeah, absolutely. They look very good. West Calder look very good as well. They won four one at home to Edinburgh Community. Andrew Jackson scored a double for them, and they're an awesome. Have you well. heard that over the years? Andrew yes. Jackson scored a double. Yeah, um, they're, they're just, so they, they've got when you've got talent like that, though. It's yeah, they're going to be so good, aren't they? They're going to be. The guy scored. The guy scored in the SPL for fun. You know, he scored for breaking for fun. I played against him my whole career. But when you look at Andy Jackson, you think, "What's that guy going to do?" Next minute, we. Big bulk guy. Next minute, you're thinking, oh, you just get him here. He's way behind you. You know, he's, he knows exactly how to score goals. You know, if you get the ball to Andy Jackson, he's going to score goals for you. And it just shows you that by uh, West Calder, another team that probably go up as well, to be honest. Yeah, I'm thinking they're looking good as well. Uh, Hart yeah. Hill were beaten. I don't think Hart Hill have been beaten very often this season, especially at home. I think it's only their fifth league defeat. Uh, Locke Gelly, uh, Albert beat them 2 1. Scott Russell and Rory Garvey with the goals. I think that's a massive result for Locke Gelly. Yeah, 100%. We went up there last year. It was a very difficult place as well. I know they struggled a little bit last year, but that's a great result, especially down there. You know, not going... Hart Hill have been a fantastic side this year. A lot of teams, obviously, would have fancied to beat Hart Hill this year after the yeah. last couple of years. They kind of stopped that rot, but fair play to lot Gelly going down there, taking three points back up the road. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, other two games, we had Linton, Hotspur now, Stony Burn 4, doubles from Jack McLaughlin and Aidan Gibb. And Stony Burn are another side that are just solid. Yeah, it's a typical, as I call it, typical West sides. You know, they're big and strong. They'll fight for everything. Um, Linton Hotspur over the next couple of years will get stronger. Yeah. You know, they will, they've got a great reset down there, obviously, just backing in. Some of the signings they've made are unbelievable. You know, they brought Stephen Anderson in from Edinburgh United. Mm-hmm. I think they've got Jamie McQueen, the goalie from Arniston as well. Also, the big centre-half there that throws the ball from, I think he throws it the whole line through the, the M8. It's an absolute <laughs> world they throw. You know, they'll be fine. He's just getting started down there, Chris King. You know, it's uh, the first season is always going to be difficult, but, you know, it's, it's, I think if they don't finish bottom, it's a successful season for them. And then next year, by the way, don't write them off next year. That'll be a lot of work being done there. And I, I fancy it may do okay. Yeah, I can see that as well. I can look at that. Final result, Fault House United 2, Pumperson 4, Brash, Sweeney, Smith and McGregor. And Pumperson, maybe similar to, to Stony Burn, they're just doing going about their business really well. Yeah, fly under the radar, you know, the other teams maybe struggled over the last couple of years. Uh, stopped the rot as well, Pumphurst, and you know, they're doing quite well. They're doing really well, but as I say, they'll be Stony Barn, Pumphurst, and Hart House, similar fault. House, probably all be kind of similar players, probably jumped around the clubs as well. You know, and they'll know each other really well, so 
it's going to be a good second half for the season for that league. You know, there's a lot of points to be picked up. There'll be a lot of teams that fans their chances on the road. There'll be a lot of teams that fans their chances at home. Uh, it's going to be close to follow, but you know, it's it's get, it's building up to be quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it certainly is, and obviously that that covers the the action for the weekend and the league. will go to to Pennycook and what's coming up Saturday, hosting Genefield Swifts. It's not going to be easy, but you'll be, you'll be hoping it can be a a big day for you. Yeah, you know it's going to be a good day regardless. You know, I'm I'm looking forward to seeing Genefield, but um, as I say, we look at our results this year: Hutchie Vale, Socky, you know, teams like that all above us, and we've we've kind of won, we've won the game. So I don't feel my team will not feel. They won't fear anybody. Um, the preparation will always 100% be there. We don't know what's going to happen. The game plans go at the minute in five, ten minutes. You know, I'm quite honest that way. I'm excited. It's just a shame that I can't really help them on the park anymore, but I can do my best at the side of the park for them. But we'll give it a right go. We'll look for three points. We won't sit in and try and get one point. It's not my style, but, you know, I'm, I'm generally looking forward to it, especially after Saturday there. Yeah, and then after that, obviously, the Saturday after, it's it's a home game and it's uh, the league leaders coming to visit. Yeah, Billy is bringing Brock's fun down, you know, it's going to be a hard game as well. But they're obviously at home, they've been at home in the Africa a lot this year. They're down there, so maybe they don't fancy it at Pennycook, you don't know. But by the way, they picked up results everywhere. Would you be surprised for a 2-1, 1-1? Mm. I don't know. I don't know what to expect, but, you know, I'm going to make it as difficult as I can for them. And uh, they're going to have to stop the rot sometime, so why not, can we not stop it at Montgomery Park? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I'm wishing you all the best for the, the rest of the season, Lewis. Thank you very much indeed for coming on, mate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Scott, thanks for having me, pal, and all the best for the rest of the season. Get yourself down to Montgomery Park shortly. I certainly will. Thank you very much. Thank indeed, you very folks. much, pal. Enjoy your night, pal. Cheers. Thank you.